Hey, hello crew. So today I'm going to do just a little sample, small sample, mm -hmm. and I have it masked off because um, uh, it is a current thing that I'm working on. So I am only exposing a small area we're going to do just, um, you know, to keep the rest for a surprise. Um, okay, so let's just go ahead and do a small section and um, what um, what my approach is or how I approach these things and um, see if this helps you or if it's anything like what you, you know, your approach is. So we have, and you can see a little bit there's nice muscular arm and just dipping my brush now so dip my brush and sometimes like if I haven't used a brush in a long time what I'll do is dip and if um, you know you can have like a little paper on the side test your point in case you have any crazy um, hair that's kind of like sticking out or anything like that so and also if you have a little too much ink on your brush uh, if it's super loaded you can kind of do that so you get your nice point okay so um here's a little bit of an inking tip so ink obviously it's ink is is black if you're not um doing washes that's all that it is, is black. So you don't have much to, um, you know, work with in terms of, of like, a, you know, tint or shading um, other than, so this is where you use lines and line weight. One thing to remember is line weight. Remember your light source, where is it at? And also another thing I like to um, remind people of, or it's you know helpful for me, is that you have to think about. And I'm inking kind of weird because I have the camera right here, so that's kind of weird because <laughs> my brush is um, is long. So I'll probably tap my phone a few times. Oops, speaking of tapping the phone, so I'll tap to make sure to get focus. Okay, so, and I'll try to stay on on camera. Um, okay, so basically, uh, my approach. So we have here a nice thick muscular arm, and um, what I was saying about lines and line weight. So you have some thin lines and thick lines for... Um, rendering and um, what I was going to say about using line weights is that that's going to be your tool for shading and, and tones because like I said uh, ink is black it's it's have it's visually heavy so you have to use line weights to adjust for um, for how you want to visually represent like the weight or the impact of the object. Um, if it's more light and airy, so his cape is floating or it's flowing, not floating. It's flowing uh, in the breeze. So I think it's important to not flatten that and because you want to have your ink or your lines or your line work not like flatten and, and stiffen that um, that cape so we have some line weights here uh, stay on camera try to not record my hand so I'm trying not to rotate the page too. So as I ink, I usually rotate the page quite a bit. 
but for demonstration I'm going to try to keep it still which gives it another challenge so it's cloth and it's light and um, try to angle this so you can see what I'm doing okay I don't know if that helps but so as you're inking you want to be sure that when you have something that's flowing, you have to remember to, I'm really awkward right now, to keep in mind that your lines should kind of like float too. I think it kind of helps with, when you keep that in mind, it kind of helps you to ink that way. Okay. Not helping me right now. So here we want to remember. So it's obviously it's a fold and there's a little shading underneath. So we have line weight. And um what I was going to say about line weight and how you use it to kind of like work for you or against you. So if you you see a fold here. I want to say that it's cloth, so it probably has some curve in it. And um, where you use your line weight to your benefit is um, make sure you keep in mind the movement of the cloth because you want to think or imagine that it is kind of flowing in the breeze. And so maybe like those lines should kind of help with the motion maybe thinner or too thicker. I, if you don't use like tapered lines, you can do like, you can do flat lines that kind of aid the eyes in motion so you can go thinner there. So you can do another set of lines maybe a little bit thicker and slightly angled because that immediately gives you a little bit of a curvature on that cloth as opposed to like if you just go flat, 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 flat. There's not much, it doesn't look like this is like it, it as much of a like a a volume or a curve in that cloth. It's just kind of flatten it out and it kind of works against you. Whereas this, it looks like it, it's a cloth that curves this way. This just go flat, flat. Um, I guess you can, I mean, it could be a style thing, not to say that it doesn't work in the hands of um, a good artist and you can make anything work. So that's a little bit of a demonstration on how you can use line weights to um, aid in the visual representation of like something that's moving or something that has volume. Um, and so, and also we want to stick with the penciler's guide. So you see, look at it and you can see like it's fold or like a little curve of the cloth it gets a little darker underneath because it's a shadow and shadows go so lighting And you can go like, it could be solid black right there. And then maybe catches a little light underneath. So it goes a little bit lighter. And here, you see maybe it gets darker when it's closer to his shoulder or arm.
and it has a slight curve to it. So if you want even more of like a curve, let's say this is like a fold that goes underneath and you want this to look a little more curved, there's also like, you can do these lines. And it just kind of like visually guides the eye so it looks even more like round right there. Or if you want more of like a sharper fold, then maybe leave that out so it looks like it just like a sharper fold. Um, and this here, so again, you you if you're gonna do like just straight flat lines, um, I always like to do like give it some movement. So maybe. You bring lines up so there's like movement. Bring it back down again. And you can also do okay. And now we'll go another fold of flow. And for me, like if I want, if I want points from my, like tapered points from my brush, I almost kind of like lay the brush down and then pull. Or some people do go in this direction. So whatever is comfortable for you, whether you pull this way or this way. And control is more of like you're almost like hovering over and then you just gradually like you're landing a plane because, you know, we all land planes all the time. And um, just kind of glide over the surface of the paper and then you can either stop it or you can keep going and lift off again for another pointed in and if you want blunt i go sideways so you can get more of this sort of look so you can do that so you can do finer too a little silly brush stuff so okay so now his arm like I said, ink is, I mean, is it's black, it's heavy, visually it's heavy. And the only thing that you can do to lighten it up is break up the lines or use line weights to give it more of like a gray tone or shading. And um, also to kind of help separate things. If you have like black on black, so to, black objects that are next to each other or um, like a mass that you want to keep separated. Is mass the right word? I don't know, but I'm using it. So there's his arm. So his shoulder is right there. Let's say that is black and this is going to be shadowed and it's going to be black. You can do kind of like a highlighting thing. Um, I'll go ahead and separate it so the cloth behind him is also black. So this is going to be black. This is going to be black. You can um, do a halo, which would be like outline. You're going to fill that in black. And then you can do like halo is exactly what it is. Um, it's like a little white separation between the two black objects and highlight would be not like perfect white outline all around but it is more of like okay so maybe some of it will get will touch so you're not going to do a complete highlight all around but you're just going to pick little spots that you want to so the 
just like um, breaking up ink lines. This is sort of like the reverse. So you're gonna have a little bit of white. And when this fills in, your eyes kind of finish the picture. So those two things aren't gonna blend into each other. Um, and that's something you might want to do. And it's not always going to be represented in pencils. So um, it depends, you can see what the penciler would prefer or you can ask if it's cool, you you know, go ahead and tackle it the way you feel is best. So um, a little bit of a semi-short video and thought process. And if you're going to highlight how do you choose where to have the light um, and dark, it's sort of like similar to how you would choose uh, line weight for when, the, uh, when you're inking. Maybe you want to pick some like an area that you that would be like a little bit of heavier, quote unquote heavier. And that would be like the thicker part and anything like, you know, that's kind of lighter lines. We we'll just go ahead and get them blacked out. Okay, so the cloth. So that's his cape. We're going to do the same thing with like the cape and the background, which is uh, the flag. Stars and stripes. Okay, so um, it's it's a challenge to talk in ink so I hope you're just kind of like visually following and whatever I'm not saying you can connect the dots so we have more line weights here and um, okay so just a bunch of little small folds like I said I mean ink is is heavy visually so to kind of Keep it interesting. You do, and you let's see, add you add levity by using different line weights and you know in um, line work and stuff. So you can use and like spotting black is a th very helpful thing and kind of fun too. So this I can say it's gonna be. And I'm just following the penciler here, and um, and here we have where the cape has. It's gonna be a shadow under here, and there's the background that is the flag. And um, what I might do is, I can do the whole highlighting thing again, just like I did with his back, with the back here and the flag, or I can say I'll just. You know, I'll play with line work instead. So I can go, I'll just do line work. And I can still just kind of leave it open a little bit. So that's kind of like highlighting instead of having it be all black and close up and connect to the flag here I am choosing to go with line weights I mean with lines and um, and you can go you can use thicker lines so again back to scaling you would you want to make sure like the scale of the lines aren't going to compete with like all the other lines you're going to put on this character um, because you want them to work together and not like overwhelm or compete. So think about your line weights that way too. And again, maybe, I mean, I'm making this a little bit, you know, darker because it's, um, maybe it sits a little bit above his arm. There's a little bit of like a shading underneath just to, give it a little more dimension. And 
inking is sort of like taking something that is two-dimensional and um, I think it helps a lot with something that's so busy and make it maybe not necessarily, you, you can't really make it three-dimensional. Maybe you can make it like a two and a half dimension. So, um, and you can play, it looks like here, you can have two line sets going this way and then this way. Um, it depends on how playful you want to get. When you start playing with a bunch of different sets of lines, it can go, you know, a little crazy and you can, it can get away from you really fast. So, um, the focus is work on one set of lines at, at a time. So I'm going to do that. And just to kind of like, again, not make it all blend together here and have it all be the same. You can, you can either, either keep it all black. I think he had a little bit of all black or it could be however you want to interpret it. Um, also another shade of gray by adding another set of lines. And the trick to working with sets of lines together is focus on one set at a time and um, stick to this set. Try to completely ignore the set of lines that were there before. And I'm gonna fade it off because I wanna imagine that it gets lighter away from his body. It's lighter. So if you can go back again. And if you really, really want to play some more, and I'm sorry, this is so small, you guys. I hope you can see okay. But if you want to make it even more interesting, so maybe because cloth folds and um, has like, you know, different shades of gray. So you can go this way too, make it a little bit dark towards his back. She's senior, so she kind of, she needs her little steps. Good girl. Okay. So we did the cape. So now we're gonna do the arm. And again, this is sort of like rounding the side towards the back of his, like uh, upper arm, shoulder, and looks like there's a little bit more shading because the cape sort of hovers above it so we it looks like you can go you can use line weight and you can do this with a nib or pen whatever you're more comfortable with first what i might want to do is you can do this before after whatever is up to you there's a little muscle definition right there so i'm going to do that so you can kind of like if you want to use it as a guide and so this would be kind of like more on like one plane. This is on another that's maybe curving more towards the back. This plane was, it would be more like facing towards us. So to give it a little bit of a curvature or volume, um, again, using line for, to, for movement to help the visual aid maybe i want to kind of slightly curve it to the back and i think we're going to with two sets of lines here so curve it to the back and down a little bit and you don't always have to use curvy lines but if you're really skilled you can use straight lines and just use it in a strategic way so it doesn't flatten out this roundness on his arm um what you don't want is to flatten or uh, take away from what the pencil is already there like i said not can't do three dimension but you can do two and a half dimensional 
especially on something super, super busy, you, okay, so you have that in, um, you want to get fancy, you can do like, add really fine lines to that too, it kind of helps with the gray. So it's almost like it curves towards that way and it curves down. And this set, so this goes that way. And again, since this is kind of on a different plane, so you don't want it to blend together. If you want it on another plane that faces at a different angle, your lines go at a different direction or keep it separate. And if you need to, you can make these lines a little bit thicker. Go in. Oh, muscle. Do not make me name muscles, you guys. Some of them don't exist in real life. Um, okay, this is a really busy, like the whole thing is really busy, so there's going to be lots more figures in there are going to be, um, let's see, all kinds. Little different subtlety in line weights. Um, but once it's all done, I might have to come back and maybe beef up a few things to make sure everything works well together. And um, everything has its own kind of like stage, or I guess, you know, we don't want to drown or, um, uh, See, not drown, but we want to make sure that everything, um, you know, nothing gets like swallowed up. So, um, hmm, okay. So, there's that again. It's really hard to talk and ink at the same time. So, hopefully, you're kind of just like you know, piecing stuff together for yourself and, um, and sometimes there's room for play, you want to play around. So maybe that little set of lines, was it there before? I don't know. So we go this way. Make it visually interesting. So maybe there's like another little fold. It's more like ripples rather than folds. You have solid folds and you have some ripples. So a few ripples. And once you get all the lines down, you can look um, back at the whole thing together, make sure that they work well together, all the, the scale of each, you know, line set works with, you know, one next to it, and they all work together as um, one solid, cohesive, um, you know, this cape together, his arm, um, is it going to, like, all the line weights here have to work, you know, together, there's, like, Okay. And let's see. Oh, here we go. I'm sorry, my camera is still shaky a little bit because I still don't have a great holder. I know I've had lots of suggestions on what, um, you know, I can buy for my holder. I'm just not real good about it, you guys. I'm sorry. Sorry, not sorry. Okay. So once you're done, you might have to come in and like touch up a few things. So I'll go ahead and finish his arm. And sometimes for me, um, you know, 
choice. Again, you have to kind of follow your penciler, but uh, sometimes for the dudes, I can tend to use more like angular, sharp, stronger lines. And for the ladies, even if they're muscular, maybe I'll play around and have the lines be a little softer, more rounder, because um, in my head, in my mind, like the, like the, let's see, I'll just go his arm. Like they're sh sharp, more angular is like stronger to me stronger and harder whereas the ladies maybe I'll go a little more soft <laughs> so, but you see the difference in like using more soft around and you can do like a hybrid too combination for me it just feels like this is just you know I don't even care if you call me sexist okay so the harder stronger more angular is just more masculine and, and psh, lady could be strong too, just because it's you know, a little more round, a little more just elegant and strong, which ladies often are elegant and strong. So um, yeah, so that's just a little session and then a little bit of a work in progress and my thought process while I'm inking. Um, did that help? <laughs> It was, I'll tell you, it's, it was hard to do, to ink and talk at the same time, because I don't really think about it. I just kind of go with intuition, and to have to put it into words is a little weird. So um, hopefully you watch and get, you know, like I said, connect your own dots. And uh, if like the little technique or, you know, if you're more of like a visual learner, so hopefully the video helped. All right, so next time, and maybe I'll do more little windows as I ink. Um, but thanks for watching, guys. Till next time. Bye.